In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called non-overlapping intervals. So given a collection of intervals, find the minimum number of intervals you need to remove to make the rest of intervals non-overlapping. So here you can see we have a 2D array, and for each subarrays, we have um, a interval which has a start time and the end time. So the start time is 1, the end time is 2, and so on and so forth. So the, um, there is a overlapping interval in the um, in the array. So all we have to do is just have to remove the overlapping interval. In this case, we want to remove the minimum number of intervals to remove. In this case, we can either remove those four, right? So, sorry, either, either we can remove those two or we can remove this interval. So we want to remove the minimum number of intervals to make it non-overlapping. So in this case, we can just remove one, two, sorry, one, three, right? So in this case, we remove one, three, um, the rest of the intervals are non-overlapping. So here you can see we have another um, 2D array, which consists of um, uh, overlapping intervals. So all we have to do is just we have to remove two um, intervals, right? Because we can either remove those two or we can remove those two to make it non-overlapping. Now here you can see we have another example of one, two, two, three. And there will be no intervals uh, overlapping. So if that's the case, then we just have to return zero. So you might need to remove only, um, sorry, any of the intervals since they are already not overlapping. So you might assume the interval's endpoint is always bigger than its start point. Okay, and the intervals like one, two, and two, three are borders touching, but they don't overlap each other. So to solve this problem, um, let's talk about how we can determine if the intervals are over are overlapping. Well, let's say we have a given example like this. Right, so where we have something like this, we know that this is overlapping, right? This this intervals that we have here is is overlapping each other, because in this case, we have an interval starts at one two and the other interval starts at one three, one to three, right? Um, in this case, is overlapping. So how can we determine that in the array? What we can do is we can um, check the current interval's last element, which is two. Two, right? Is actually bigger than the first element of the adjacent interval. In this case, is one. Then we know that there is an interval. Uh, sorry, I mean there is a overlap interval. And if we have something like this, um, then we know that this is a non-overlap interval because in this case two, right, the the end time of the current interval is not bigger than the start time of the interval. So therefore, we cannot we cannot say this is an overlap interval. So once we find there is an overlapping interval, what we can do is we can say, okay, well, if there is an overlapping interval, we can just remove the, um, the overlapping interval, right? So in this case, we can either, either remove this one or remove this one. But first, we have to sort the array by the, each interval's start time. In this case, let's say we're given this kind of intervals, and we just sort the array based on the first element, in this case, two goes after one, so we have a descending, uh, ascending order of the um, start time intervals. And that looks something like this. And we have one, three, and two, four, right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find if there's an interval, in this case, there is a duplicate, or sorry, overlapping interval. Then what we're gonna do is we can either remove either this one or this one, right? So, but what if we have something like this, right? What if we have something like this, where, okay, well, we talk. We, we 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 know that all we have to do is we just we just have to figure out if there is an interval. If there is a overlap interval, we just have to increment the count by one, and then we're just going to compare um, the 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 next interval, right? So in this case, we have a situation where we have three overlap intervals. Then which one should we remove, right? We can re either remove um, one second. Let's change the color. So we can either remove this one, right? We can either remove this one or we can remove this one. Because if we were to remove this one, we have to remove um, both of them, right? Because in this case, if we remove this one, there is another overlapping interval right here. So we, if, so we have to remove both. Then there will be two intervals that we're going to remove. But if we were only to remove this interval right here, right? then we only have two intervals, right? So there, in this case, if we remove this one, that will be the valid answer. So how can we, how, how do we know that? 
Well, let's take a look at another example. Here you can see we have another um, interval, right? So three um, intervals. And you can see that we have a long one, which is between one to five, and the other one is two to three, and the other one is four to five. So which one should we remove? We can either remove of those two and keep the longer one, right? Or what we can do is we can just remove the longer one and keep the shorter ones. And now we have two intervals rather than just one. So the valid answer, of course, is gonna be removing the longer one so that we have, uh, we, we basically remove the minimum interval, right? In this case, we just remove one. So to solve this problem, what we can do is we can basically um, compare the end time, right? We want to, let's say we found that there is a overlapping interval. All we have to do is we just have to compare the end time of those each intervals, those two intervals. We basically trying to find, we're basically trying to remove an interval that has a longer um, end time or a, a larger end time. In this case, the end time for this second interval is four. Then all we have to do is we just have to remove the interval that has a bigger, um, bigger end time. In this case, it's going to be the second interval, right? And same thing apply to this one right here. Okay, so in this case, if we were to, if we found a dupe overlapping interval, all we had to do is we have to remove the longer interval, right? The, the, the bigger end time, a, a interval that has a bigger end time in this case is gonna be the first one. It's gonna be this one, right? This one's five and this one's three. Three is less than five. So what we had to do is we just have to remove the top one. Okay, so what if we, yeah, basically here you can see all we have to do is we just compare the left end time and the right end time. If the right end time is bigger, then we just have to remove the right end time. Okay, so now you know how to solve this problem. Let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So if we were to do this in code, our first step is to make sure that the data, right, um, the intervals are not empty. So we're going to check to see if intervals.length is equal to zero or intervals at zero dot length is equal to zero, right? Because it doesn't really say anything on the constraints. So we're going to see if it's actually zero. If it's zero, if it's empty, then we can just return zero because there's nothing that we can remove, right? Okay. So what we're going to do then is um, one second. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're basically just going to have a sort the array first, right? We're going to sort the array, raise the sort intervals based on the, um, the, the, the start time. So we have A and B. We're going to sort the array based on ascending order. Okay, and what we're going to do is once we sort the array, we're going to have a, because we're going to remove, um, not, sorry, we're not going to remove the interval. We're just going to have a tracker, the counter, that basically count how many intervals that we remove at the end. So we're going to say count, counter, right? So counter is equal to zero. And we're also going to have a previous, previous interval because we don't know which one we're going to remove we're going to compare the interval with, right? We initially, we're going to have a this interval as the um, initial interval so that we can compare with the adjacent element, right? In this case, we're going to compare with this, this interval. Um, if this interval is overlapping with this interval and this interval has a shorter, um, has a smaller end time, then we're going to take this interval as the previous interval to compare with the next interval, right? So we're going to have pre is equal to intervals at zero and we're going to start the the, the array uh, the the um the loop at the next one so while i is less than intervals dot length what we're going to do is we're just going to start to compare um with the current interval with the previous interval right so in this case if the previous interval at one the end time is actually bigger than intervals um, at i at the start time right if it's bigger then we know that this is a, there is overlapping so that means that there is overlapping if there is a overlapping then what we're going to do is we're going to see who has a larger end time 
and whoever has a larger end time, we're just going to um, remove that, right? We're not actually going to remove that. We're just going to keep. We're just going to get the the interval that's not that's that has a shorter um, that has a shorter end time to be the previous array, right? To so be the previous um, or interval that we're going to compare with the next interval. So what we're going to do is we're going to in first increment the counter by one because we found the overlap interval, right? So we're going to remove it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if the previous at one is actually bigger than um, intervals at i as at one, right? So we're going to see if the um, so if the, the the previous interval, right, in this case at one is bigger than the interval, the current interval, then what we had to do is we have to get the previous interval, the, the previous pointer, it's going to point to intervals at i, okay? And this will give us the the um, the interval, the new interval that we're going to compare with in the next iteration. Otherwise, if we have a situation where we don't, we don't have an interval, then we also have to get the previous interval. Uh, the the previous interval point to the current interval to compare with, right? And at the end, all we're returning is the counter. So basically, let me just summarize this. Basically, we're just going to have a previous interval, the previous interval that we're going to compare with, with the current interval, and we start at index one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if there is overlapping, right? So we're going to compare to see if the previous interval at the end time is bigger than the, in the current intervals at the start time. If it is, then there is over there is a overlapping, then we're just going to increment the counter by one. And if the um, to delete the overlapping interval, we want to delete an uh, uh, interval that has a larger end time. In this case, if the previous um, interval at end time is bigger than the current interval's end time, then we're going to get the smaller end time um, interval to be the previous interval, right? And um, if there is no overlapping, then we're going to get the previous interval is equal to the intervals at i, which is the current interval, so that we can compare with um, the adjacent interval, right? The next iteration. Um, so let's try to run the code. Okay, let's try to throw more test cases. Okay, let's try to submit. And here you can see we have our success. So basically, this is how we solve this leak code problem. And the time complexity in this case is going to be n log n because we're doing sorting. And this is going to be a linear. So n log n is bigger than linear. So therefore, we have n log n as a time complexity. So there you have it. And thank you for watching.